So let's talk about uh, some of the more like common features you'd want to see in a suit like this. The first thing is I'm, that I'm pretty proud of is getting the arc reactor to do this with my palm. So I have it on a little limiter switch that's kind of sitting in the back of my wrist. And as I just flick my wrist back, it contacts my skin, just pushes the switch down and it turns on and off. All I'm doing is interrupting a DC uh, switch. There's no microcontroller. It's literally just this red wire right here ran over to a battery pack. So that just goes on and off because I see a lot of people walking around cons and stuff with all the lights on all the time. And I kind of feel like it's silly to just have everything lit up when you can have some kind of nice effects. This will be diffused with a little bit. Um, there's an insert that goes in there to kind of diffuse the, uh, the LED so it's not as bright and you don't see the yellow uh, cob LED. The other thing is this not so complex relay system I set up. And you'll see wires sitting here on the, uh, the end of the uh, fingers. So... Right now it's open, and if I touch these two fingers together, the helmet closes. Now, <laughs> unfortunately, the server, servo stripped out and burned out while I was testing this. This is like my junk test helmet right here. I use it just for all, like, you can see that it goes on and off. Um, I use it for all just my testing, which exactly like this, because if it breaks, I don't really care. So you'll actually, you're gonna hear the motor lose its mind when I do this. Yeah, so the gear stripped out. And the reason it's stripped out is because since I hotwired the servos to just run DC, open, close, there's no limit. There's nothing to tell the servo to stop. I had to kind of figure out a way around that. And luckily this nice little relay system, if you uh, see these two little limiter switches, they are actually interrupting the triggers to my fingers. So if I touch these, you'll hear the motor going. And then, let's see, it should be this one, I think. No, what is it? Yeah, okay. So if I hold the, brown, the trigger on the brown wire, Nothing happens. So let's get this to spin. So this interrupts that. Now, but the way it's wired up, this other trigger, the other circuit, no matter if I'm holding this one, it'll still, it'll still work and close. So I'm gonna place these inside the helmet. They'll be um, actually moved over where the hinges are. So once the helmet's fully closed, one switch will trigger and then this circuit won't work anymore but then the opening circuit still still will work and vice versa so it'll tell the motors to stop this way i don't burn them out also the motor that's in this helmet is kind of uh cheap and crappy it was just a really simple 9g servo from ebay again just for testing tech the servos that are going to go in the final helmet are much stronger much more reliable and i won't have this issue i was also pulsing 12 volt to them instead of 9 volt so i, I definitely just burned it out and i just i don't feel like swapping it out right now i know this works the proof of concept is good so let me take this off and i can explain the circuit a little bit better so you guys can you know screenshot this diagram it's really crappy um, I'm probably going to draw a little bit of a better one, but this is basically the system I've uh, came up with at work. I was bored and just doodling. Um, and then those two little limiter switches I was talking about interrupt these two wires right here going to the hands. And then this is the 12 volt. So basically what's happening is I need to switch the polarity on the servo motor. So I have two relays flipped around and these are the 30s. So the 30s are constantly resting at ground right here. If you follow this, it's just sitting at um, rest. So both sides of the, the servo motor are at ground. Now, if I want to open, what I do is I take this 12 volt and I pulse it to one finger. And what that'll do is it'll switch the relay from ground over to a live 12. So now one side of the motor is getting 12, the other side is still grounded, but never at the same time. Let my finger go, switch over to the other one, it'll then pulse 12 to this relay and switch it over to 12. This one's at ground now because I'm not touching it. So now the other side of the motor gets 12 volt. So you can just switch back and forth doing what you want and it'll spin the motor let, you know, forward and back, forward and back. And then all, all I'm doing is just closing a circuit. Now you can, instead of using fingers, you can use a momentary push button that you can mount on the side of the helmet. You could really do anything you want with this. And all it is is just the not, a nine volt battery you can use a five volt, you can use a 12 volt, depending on your servo, whatever moves it. Um, I might actually switch to it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I, I think I'm gonna do a five volt. It'll actually slow down the motor a little bit. The, this is the, these are the triggers going to the motor. So this is, you know, uh, open, close, close, open, whichever way this goes. These are the two wires that are going to the, uh, the glove. These are the two wires that need 12 volt. And this is the wire giving 12 volt. So this black wire goes to the thumb. These, you know, uh, the brown one's the pointer, the purple one is the middle finger. It doesn't, that, that color doesn't matter. And these are the interruption switches. They're just, these are the same, this is the same switch I'm using in the wrist. It's just a little uh, trigger 
So now if we go over here to the glove, so here are the wires, and then right in the back of the forearm is the actual trigger button. And again, all it's doing is this is just a 12 volt positive negative, and it interrupts here, and then it comes out the back of the forearm to just a power pack. So this is gonna be sitting in the suit, and that's all this switch is doing. It's just closing that circuit. It's doing the opposite of what these ones are doing. Right now, there is a circuit there, pushing and closes it. That's what these two contacts are. The one in the forearm is hooked up to that middle one though. So there is no circuit and now there is. DC circuitry is pretty easy. You really just need to get in there and mess with it. Um, especially if you're using low voltage like this, like a nine volt, if you've ever licked a nine volt battery to make sure it's alive, you notice it didn't kill you. It's not high amperage. So there's really not much you can do to hurt yourself with messing with nine volts. Get some wires, get a nine volt, get some cheap LEDs and just start making circuits. Add switches, interrupt them. Learn relays. Um, this 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 is just invaluable to know. Knowing how to use relays has just, it's been incredible. There's so much you can do with them. Like control Iron Man helmets with your hand or, you know, the huge automotive applications. That's where I learned everything. Like I said, I'm just trying to um, incorporate what I know into this. And I haven't had to use Arduinos yet. Nothing's really hindered me too much where I've needed to switch to programming. So it's been going pretty well so far. Um, the eyes, the eyes were something else that I was trying to figure out. And luckily someone, um, Zach Barlow on Instagram, good dude. He uh, helped me out figure this out. So as you've seen in other videos, when the helmet closes, the eyes come on. But I want to be able to turn the eyes off as well while the mask is down. But I don't, again, I don't want to, you know, a switch I have to hit. Um, it's called a flip-flop switch or a flip-flop relay, I believe. And if you, yeah, flip-flop switch. And what it does is the mask will close, it'll complete a circuit. It operates the same way as a relay, where the uh, the 30 switches from the 87A to 87 only under load, only under 12 volt. The flip-flop switch remembers where it is though. So you pulse it once, it goes to one side. You pulse it again, it goes back to the other and it stays there. So what I can do is interrupt the circuit going to the eyes. That way when the mask closes, the lights turn on. But then with the same, I'm gonna add a third wire over here, or probably to the other glove. And what that'll do is it'll let me um, turn the eyes on and off. I can just, you know, click, the eyes will go on, click, the eyes will go off when the mask is closed. So I can walk around, have the mask down, but I can still see because it's a little hard to see out of the eyes when the LEDs are on. So just being able to turn them off will make my life a lot easier without having to walk around the convention with my whole, my mask up the entire time because I'm not, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and no one wants to see my face while, you know, Iron Man's walking around. Doesn't look great. I've also got the uh, Infinity Stones all wired up, glued in, ready to go. Uh, the whole gauntlet's clear coated and I just love how this came out. The camera really doesn't do it too much justice with how bright it is. The room's a little bright and I mean even even in daylight you can see that they're lit up um, and they look great at like dusk and nighttime. So they're just uh, simple LEDs pre-wired from osmium.com. The wire them all in parallel and run them running them off of 12 volt right now, but they'll actually turn on for as low as five volts. So that kind of you know um, limit lowers your requirement. And this thing, I just, I'm so happy with this. It's gonna be a real nice centerpiece. So what I'm gonna do with this is they're not gonna be, like I was saying, I don't want this always on. I don't wanna walk around with this just constantly on. I might add a potentiometer to kind of limit the voltage. What I wanna do is maybe at the very least have them off. And then I'm gonna add another circuit just like I did with the, uh, the helmet. And when I go for, you know, the little snap pose, they'll turn on. This way I can have them off and it's not just this boring like walking around with them constantly on. It'll add a little bit more effect to when people realize what they are. I can, you know, show them like, hey, look, watch them turn on. And then um, even if I can make kind of a fist, I can still kind of contact them and you can't really tell that uh, I'm, I'm doing that. So we're going to see how that turns out. And I'm also adding like uh, the switch for the eyes will be in the pointer finger as well. So these two fingers will control the LED eyes and this infinity stones. And then the other hand will control the motor for the helmet going up and down. So that'll work out pretty nicely. Magnets. So someone on Instagram, and I look like an idiot right now. Um, someone on Instagram turned me on to these cool little uh, purse clasp magnets. And that, that's it. These are just held on by little magnets right here. And they kind of want to, they're self-centering not self-centered magnets. So they want to kind of go into this little spot of rest back into the, um, right into the center of themselves. So what this can do is if you have a mask that you don't want to motorize, 
it can just stay exactly in that position and then with some you know force they'll come apart they don't like being pulled um not is it axially diagonally i don't know they don't like being pulled straight apart so right now i'm pulling pretty hard and they're not coming off but all i got to do is just kind of flick my wrist to the side and they separate instantly so there's these really super little cheap um, magnet clasps and you can see that right in the center of them there's these little uh little there's a hole in this one and a little peg in this one so unless they're lined up so trying to shear them left and right you know pushing that way and that way really hard but then all you got to do is really just separate them and they come right apart I did the helmet right there as a test. Um, I just wanted a, kind of a proof concept. This helmet's too small. I don't know if you saw just how tight it fit my head. Um, there's no room in here for arms or motors or servos or whatever. Uh, if, this, if this helmet was 1% smaller, it wouldn't fit my head. Um, but it looks kind of nice. Just, you know, it, it looks like the Nanotech helmet. Like it was made for my head. So I'm probably still gonna finish this. Um, maybe I'll wear it around, I don't know, without the suit, I don't know. Um, or sell it or give it away, we'll figure it out. But this was just a proof of concept that the, that the magnets actually hold and they hold great. I'm gonna, but what I'm gonna use these for is for other armor parts around the suit. The abs, the chest, just things that I, um, that the straps and buckles aren't aligning. I was having a hell of a time getting the waist section to stay lined up, especially on the side where there's just the, all these straight lines and I don't want it to look like trash, but I also need to be able to get the thing on and off. The buckles, the buckles and strap are good for distributing weight and holding moving parts, but the solid bits that I need to take on and off just wasn't having it. So that'll, uh, that'll really help me get everything lined up. They sell them in a bunch of different configurations and sizes and strengths. So just play around with them. Um, these are just, I think I got a whole little container of them. Uh, there's 20 in here for like five or $6. And then I have some extra strong ones. So we're going to see how those go. Um, still need to finish up some, I had to reprint the whole ab section. I don't want to talk about that. It's just, it's been a nightmare trying to uh, get it, get that gap closed. It bugs me. It bugs the absolute living crap out of me. Um, so I'm in the painting process. I'm almost done. See, uh, I'm almost done painting actually. Uh, I just really have the legs and the abs left. Uh, everything else is just kind of getting the wires in. Luckily, the legs don't have any LEDs. So as paint's drying for the, sorry, uh, as paint's drying for the um, the legs and I'm waiting for all that to go, I can work on the LEDs and all the lighting for the, for the arms, for the torso, for the back, the head. I actually don't have a good helmet printed right now that I'm gonna finally use. So I still have to pick that. I still have to, I'm still not sure if I'm gonna use the DO3D helmet. Um, that's a little bit sleeker. Uh, or if I want to use the Mark II, Mark One Thingiverse helmet. So these are the two helmets right here. They probably don't look too different from each other. This one's just a little bit sleeker. The brow line, it's a lot skinnier. This one's a little bit bulkier. So I'm still back and forth on which design I want to use. I do really like this one. It's comfortable. It has a little bit wider jaw. Uh, this one has more accurate eyes. So I think I'm going to finish both helmets. I need to print this one bigger so I can put arms and servos in it. Um, this is at 100%. I'll probably print it at like 105, 110. This one's at 96%, the V1 from Thingiverse. And then uh, I'll probably finish them, put them both on the suit before I motorize them and kind of see which one looks better. I'll probably ask you guys on Instagram like, hey, which one you know looks more movie accurate? You know, um, But that kind of does it for this update video. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in and watching and putting up with me and my constant posts on Instagram and my lack of posts on YouTube. I'm trying to get better with it. I'm so excited for this. I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna kind of suit up for the first time with everything painted, but I don't know if I'm gonna reveal that on YouTube until the first Comic-Con in May, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So, so uh, thanks for watching. This helmet is falling apart in my hands and have a good day.